Queen Elizabeth II spent her final days at her home away from home, Balmoral Castle, which has been a sanctuary really for the royal family since the days of Queen Victoria. Prince Albert bought it for Queen Victoria, her, uh, uh, his, uh, his wife. Members of the royal family say it was a happy refuge for Queen Elizabeth, where, where she could get away from the rigors of royal life, where she could hunt grouse, fish. According to the BBC, it's also where she spent much of her uh, husband, Prince Philip's remaining years with him as well. Shannon's Issa Soros has more on the Queen's beloved homeland, uh, home in the Scottish Highlands. I think Granny is the most happy there, and I think she really, really loves the Highlands. Balmoral Castle, located on 50,000 acres in the Scottish Highlands, was the preferred summer retreat of Queen Elizabeth, where many say she felt most relaxed from the rigidity of royal life. Walks, picnics, um, dogs, a lot of dogs, there's always dogs, and people coming in and out all the time. Free from public duty, the Queen could relax and spend time riding her beloved horses, hiking and playing games like charades with family members who would often make the trip to visit during the summer sojourn. It's a lovely base for Granny and Grandpa to be for us to come and see them up there when you just have room to breathe and run. For all the splendour and grandeur of royal residences, Balmoral was known as homey, rustic, full of family photos. There was even a cushion embroidered with the words, it's good to be queen. Former Prime Minister Tony Blair has described in his memoir a weekend at Balmoral as a vivid combination of the intriguing, the surreal and the utterly freaky. Where pre-dinner drinks were, quote, true rocket fuel and the queen herself would do the washing up, Blair wrote. They put the gloves on and stick their hands in the sink. The queen asks if you finished, she stacks the plates up and goes off to the sink. For Britain's longest serving monarch, Balmoral held a sentimental significance. Ow, it's my foot you're standing on. <laughs> it was where young Elizabeth met a then officer in the British Army, who would later become her husband, Prince Philip. It was also at Balmoral that the royal family, including Prince Harry and Prince William, learned of the death of their mother, Princess Diana. In happier times, the royal family's annual Gillies Ball was at Balmoral, a Scottish dance party from the time of Queen Victoria, held to thank the royal staff for their hard work. But it was the landscape that held the most appeal for the Queen. The walks along the hills surrounding the property, the hunts, the picnics, and of course her drives around the estate in her Land Rover. A beloved place of history and of symbolism, a fitting end to Her Majesty's final days at home at Balmoral. Um, Issa Soros joins us now from Inverness in Scotland. It's incredible to me that it's 50,000 acres of land around that castle. Can you describe the Queen's relationship with the royal staff at Balmoral? I understand they were, they were quite close. They were very close. I mean, you, as you heard in that piece there, it really outlined what Balmoral meant really to her from such a young age and that of course not just as a young as a young daughter there but obviously becoming uh, a fiance uh, then becoming a wife mother and a grandmother so the memories she holds there are so close to her heart like many of us as it's a home in many ways this is where she spent much of her residence and of course the staff are very part of uh, really the, the, the furniture in many ways. She got to know them from a very young age. And I think today that's why you, you really feel like the saddest of evenings here, uh, Anderson. I think there's a collective sense uh, of shock and grief, but also uh, of admiration for this incredible monarch and matriarch. And I think it doesn't matter if you're in London, Anderson, or if you're in Scotland, the comments I've been hearing are very much the same. One person said to me today, I can't quite understand why I feel like I'm grieving, though I've never met uh, the Queen. And it's because for about 80% of the population here, uh, there's only been one monarch, and that is the Queen. And that's why we've seen scenes outside Balmoral Castle of people uh, bowing their heads, 
laying down uh, flowers, paying tributes to a, a woman really that has defined their life, it's been their constant yeah. throughout. As one of the Queen's uh, former private secretary says, the Queen was a constant like a northern star. That's how constant she was. So people really today paying tribute, of course, to a woman that has defined their lives. Yeah. Anderson. Mr. Soros, thank you so much.